Welcome to this insane. Doing a tutorial for this game, Trials Fusion. I'm on PS4. PS4 servers are normally down. Because there's I don't know, something happened, but whatever. Alright, so they're gonna fix it soon. So yeah. So I've built a couple of maps that I didn't get to share yet. And I'm gonna do a little tutorial on them. So this is to create first person or anything double jump wise. So this is a rig that I that I done before. Okay. This, I think this is my game camera. Well, now it is. Usually you want no bounce. Uh, usually you want no buoyancy. This is only if you want to float on the water. You obviously want contact response. You want no physics or anything. Well, depending on your type, obviously. So, for people who already know how to make first person games, you shouldn't be watching this. And if you want to watch this, you can watch Fermitic Bog's tutorial because he has the easiest tutorial. Alright? Because this stuff can get pretty complicated, and I don't think you want to watch mine because I don't make it super easy or anything. So, yeah. No, I don't want to do that, but... The thing that we are missing now is... Skill game, because I'm doing this from scratch. Select game character. So now the physics bubble is going to follow... The thing, but we gotta tell it to have physics. Or it's not gonna work because it's physics based, right? So, I just gotta say physics on, and everything should work accordingly to plan. There we go. Oh, now it's too fast. Okay, but you know what I'm saying. Now, this is where uh, angular damping and object damping comes into place. Linear damping, I usually put that to 90, angular damping, that to 70, and then we can have a more fluent motion of our character control. See, it's a little bit less steady. Now obviously when you, when you jump and stuff, we're going to create the jump button of course. That's the point of this video, right? Uh, obviously when you jump, you're going to accelerate in speed and then this accelerate in speed, so... It's not really that 
it gets concerning, but that that's for a different video. It's going to get too complicated because when you start calculating different values in the air and the ground, you have to have a specific system for that. And that gets pretty complicated for me because then when I want to do this in the air and I want to do that in the air, then all this stuff gets rearranged. You just want something that kind of flows in between. If you're trying to make a realistic, because I made an underwater jump map and I had a double and a triple jump, right? And I had a, a sound source with that. And this is what this video is for. So this is going to be your jump button, okay? Because you need a ground surface for jump. You know what I'm saying? You can't have like anyth anything else that specific jump, if you know what I'm saying. So you would want to grab an object that is not specifically that object, but if I was thinking about it, because you want object, you want an object type. You don't want an object instances, because then you have to reselect every single object instances. So if you get an object type and make the object invisible, then it's a lot easier on you in the end. You know what I'm saying? So grab an object that you might think you will never need. Like, since I usually make, like, realistic first-person games, this is what I do. Is I'll grab the object that I would not need, which is this shit. So if I wanted to make a lava that burns me, I'd make it object types, co uh, sending the coordinates to the player. So if my player touches that board, I will burn. But as soon as I get off of that board, the burning will stop. But then if I go on the thing, it's burn. So burn on active, on leave, burn off. And it's the same thing. Kind of vice versa if you want to do it the same way too. Obviously, if you want to do this this object object instances, you have to reapply object instances for every single copy if you want. Obviously, you would want to make it visibility off, but collision contact response, but then it's an object instances. If it's object types, what happens if you want to use that same floor type for the walls, then you're gonna start doing double jumps off the walls and it's gonna screw up your entire double jumping mechanic, right? So, the best way to do it is obviously object types, but the game's not gonna understand an invisible object to a visible, visible object because it's gonna say it's the same type of object. You understand? So, you know what I mean? In real video game design, I could take this object, make it something else, reapply a different texture on it, and then name it that specific type of object, you know what I'm saying? But this is not video game design, this is the Trials Editor. So we have to adapt, right, if you want to make stuff in the Trials Editor like this. So pretty much, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a double jump. I'm just going to grab an interval trigger. I'm going to grab an object position event OP. And I'm going to grab a, uh, a two input operator so I can divide the distance between up and down on the Y axis. I'm going to grab each individual axis, X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to make this to the lowest amount. Not local, no angular, X, Y, Z. We don't know what the operand is yet. We're obviously going to select the object that we want, which we're probably going to make it an invisible block. Like this. We're gonna make it really huge, kind of like 190 right there. We're gonna go like this, select this object, and then to select this object. And then we're gonna say negative because it's gonna go underneath the object, maybe negative six.
And then we're gonna tie buttons to it. We're gonna tie this to a variable data source, actually. Because we're gonna animate it on command. Obviously, this has to be Y, this has to be Z. And we're flying because it's zero. So negative, let's say 10. That's too low. Negative 60, zero 060. We're still flying. Negative 70. Let's say negative one. We're still flying. Negative 15. We're not flying anymore. Okay, so that's gonna be our feet. So we're, our feet's gonna be extended. So negative 115 is the value for that. Okay, and so basically it's gonna follow us, it doesn't matter where we are, and it's gonna be pretty much gonna be our jump. And it actually works really good as a jump, believe it or not. And so we're gonna tie this with a button. A button that I know of is triangle, which is Y. Run. You want to turn these buttons on when you start the game because it's not good, right? So obviously you would want to tie it with something else. I'm going to leave it able though. And I'm going to grab a bunch of set value events. So pretty much what's going to be, it's going to say... I'm gonna say on press, right? On press will deliver a value of, I don't know, 80, right? We're gonna turn off our button command. Obviously, so we can press it again on the same command. Uh, after we press it, we're gonna obviously set this to 80. After a set amount of ticks. Right. Run. Probably gonna happen instantly. We're gonna revert this back to the same number. And that's gonna be in, I would say maybe 300, no, is it? I'd say maybe 800 milliseconds, which is eight milliseconds. It's going to revert back to position ground, so it's going to be like, I jump, I don't jump. So it's something that's colliding with the player that make him go up and then make him go down, almost acting like a jump button. And then after the set amount of time, we're going to turn on the trigger again. Okay. All right, so we could do another double jump. You understand what I'm saying? Does this make sense? We're gonna copy the whole mechanism up here again. You could tie sound sources to this, but I'm making it super easy so it's not too long of a video. Okay, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, now 
It's going to be the same thing again. We're just going to apply the chain onwards with the jump button. Okay. And this is where our uh, thing comes in line again. The hit trigger. So the hit trigger is going to send a coordinate to my player. The same time send the coordinate uh, to object types, which is that. And disabled. So every time we hit the ground, it's going to make this turn on. Okay, so we should have a jump, jump, and then uh, as soon as we hit the floor, we should recycle our jump. But this is where it's wrong, because obviously we did something wrong here. Okay. Because we're not going to recycle that, we're going to do this. See if it works. So our first jump, our second jump, done. Our first jump, our second jump, done. Our first jump, our second jump, done. So our first jump and our second jump. Our first jump and our second jump. You see how there's like a little transition there? First jump, second jump. As soon as we hit the ground, we recycle the jumps again. First jump, let's see, test the first jump. First jump, second jump. First jump, second jump. And so... If I cr start creating a series of platforms, obviously. See if I wanted to jump over here, and you need a double jump to cross that area. Right? You would say, first jump, second jump. Jump again, first jump, second jump. But you see how the distance is different in the air? Because we, you have to program that aspect of that. Because then you just don't even have to do a jump. You can just go like, boom, and do jump, first jump, and jump again. Well, the to basic tutorial of this video is like, I jump again, then I jump again. So do a double jump. And you can keep doing it over and over again. Double, triple, quadruple jump. And just fucking jump, the fifth jump, sixth jump, seventh jump. And I'm unable to press it until I hit the bottom. Even if you spam it, it just doesn't work. So that's how you make a double jump in a first-person game. 
that's really easy to do. Obviously, this is just an example, but if you want to tweak it to where it makes it look like a realistic jump, you could try lowering the values and all this different type of stuff. But that's how you change it on command, a following OPE operand to a variable data source. And with the variable data source, you can start uh, correcting it with set value events. And the set value event, make sure your uh, delayed transitions are lower than anticipated. And then you could make uh, better, j more realistic jumps. And then they're going to feel like realistic jumps. You could also uh, use a... A, uh, a force event would those force up but that's I don't know it feels like that's kind of janky but but then you have to do a force down you know what I mean so this is like super easy to do it works just like a realistic jump it's pretty much a, an object colliding with another object giving it a little bump or a little push you know what I'm saying right in real life when we jump right we have to spring ourselves upwards our feet have like these spring muscular motions and then that's how we could jump right but to jump again in midair how do you do that obviously there's some sort of force that has to come with it right so uh yeah that's the force right there is a the double jump you could use force or this but i recommend you use this okay so that's I'm saying the legend. That was my tutorial. I hope you guys loved it, and uh, I may come out with more tutorials. All right, later. Bye.